Good morning, everyone. My name is Moki Hino, and I am the rector here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church here in Wailuku, Maui. Today is Sunday, April 23rd, 2023, and this is the third Sunday of Easter. Uh, I invite you to take a look at your service bulletin for all the pertinent announcements and also to keep an eye out for a, a constant contact letter from me on Fridays and chicken chat on Thursdays. And with that, we begin our service this morning with the ringing of the bell.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord God, Heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will have the reading of the lessons. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be, given, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I pay, repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows, vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like, the, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been war born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And so he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place there in these days? And Jesus asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And yes, besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they didn't find his body there, they came back and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Wasn't it necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? And that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I used to, um, every year in seminary, take a class where we, um, jo we were joined by seminarians from other denominations. And I specifically remember the very, the last year that I did that out in Mundelein, which is a, a Catholic, a Roman Catholic seminary kind of in the uh, northern suburbs of Chicago. And uh, the, the professor wrote a question on the board and it said, when was the first Eucharist? And uh, we all, of course, said, you know, uh, the Last Supper on Monday, Thursday, da 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 da. And he said, no, those were the instructions for how to do the Eucharist. But the first Eucharist was actually on the road to Emmaus. And I thought, how fascinating. And then um, the, the professor unpacked that because. You know, we always say, risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. And uh, in, in this story, it is in the breaking of the bread that Cleopas and his companion realize that uh, Jesus was in their midst and, and they recognized uh, who, who he was. And um, it, also, it also speaks to hospitality because they didn't know that 
until they invited him in because it was late in the day you know have some food uh, come in and uh, stay overnight if you need to and it was the it was the hospitality their their hospitality that um, led them to this wonderful conclusion uh, you know they don't actually have uh, or know <coughs> where Emmaus is. Uh, there, there are different theories about it and um, one of the places that they say that it is is this place called Abu Ghosh. And um, the first time I went to Jerusalem I had the opportunity to go to Abu Ghosh and we were going to have a uh, uh, a Eucharist there because um, you know it was the road to Emmaus and uh, so we went we went up to the church and there were some delightful um, French nuns who were there and they were getting really really anxious because we were supposed to go into the church but there was a group of pilgrims there from China and they were so into what they were doing they were singing and da 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 da, -da and um, they were cutting into our time that we had the church reserved and I had been walking around in the grounds you know um, prior to that and I noticed that there was a table and some chairs outside on the corner of the property so I told the nun oh can't we do our Eucharist out there and she said oh you would do that and I said yeah and I was I thought it was so cool because um, the event itself didn't happen inside a church. It happened outside. So why not enhance that experience and have the Eucharist like outside? So she was all happy. And then um, she didn't have to get any of the vestments or um, anything ready. Uh, oh, I should go back and explain. I'm sorry that I was assigned to do the Eucharist, okay? So, um, which was really cool because we were there on the anniversary of my ordination. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now, now that I've caught you all up. So we go outside and I said, there's no need for vestments. Just give me a stole, you know. And she says, oh, really? You know, mercy. And so um, I stood on the road to Emmaus, presided over a Eucharist in my quicksilver rash guard and a green stole was the most fabulous experience and then what I specifically remember about that was after we were done I said to everyone now just sit and look out from this road and feel the presence of Jesus and we looked out on that road and in the background we could see the city of Jerusalem so, um, you know, it was, it was really a wonderful thing. Not everybody gets to go to the Holy Land. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed because I got to do that. But uh, really, the Holy Land is here. And, um, you know, if, if Jesus is in our hearts, then our hearts are the Holy Land. And uh, where do we see the risen Lord and the breaking of the bread. We see it every single Sunday when we stand up there and break the host and split it in two, you know. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And there's Jesus. And what's so remarkable about all of that is, you know, we take that whole loaf of bread and we break it up into little pieces just like you know we broke the body of Christ into pieces when we nailed him to the cross and then you and I go up and we take a piece of bread each and then when we go out into the world to live into the gospel through our thoughts words and deeds we put that broken loaf of bread back together and and make it whole and uh, I, I just think that's a beautiful beautiful thing and every time I think about the risen Lord being known to us in the breaking of the bread on the road to Emmaus I always think about how when we walk out the door of the church and go on our roads to faith 
we put that broken piece of bread back together and I think that's such a wonderful thing so uh, think about that um, the next time you're at a Eucharist and uh, think about how the risen Lord is known to you in your human heart and how does that manifest and what does that look like and then what do you and I do with it um, from Sunday afternoon to Saturday night uh, so there you go, the road to Emmaus. Happy trip, everybody. What do we believe? We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now it's time for the prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Bob, our bishop, and Moki, our priest. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for Joseph our president, Josh our governor, Gil our senator, Richard our mayor, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Brigida Casio, Redentor Dela Cruz, Claudia Manuel, Mabel St. Shore, and Esperanza Yoro. Pray for those who have died. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, I ask your prayers for the Church of the Province of Uganda, in our Diocese of St. Mark's Honolulu, the Reverend Paul Lilly, and Mr. Jason O'Donnell, St. Matthew's Waimanalo, the Reverend Ernesto Jar Pasalo, and the Reverend Annalise Pasalo. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry of a cup of cold water. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially Toyohika Kagawa, George, St. Mark the Evangelist, Robert Hunt, Zita of Tuscany, Christina Rossetti, and Catherine of Sien. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And because this is a uh, time of salvation, where we focus on our salvation, we omit the confession during the season of Easter. And with that, in the words our Lord and Savior taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. 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 Alleluia, alleluia.